everyone. Thank you so much for joining us at the Aquarium Online Academy coming to you from the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California. I'm Stacy. I'm one of the folks here um, that works here at the Aquarium of the Pacific and I am not the only person here as part of your Academy team. I actually have a few others with me today. Um, my friend Allie is working the computer that we can see all of these beautiful images behind us. And then my friend Aaron is at the computer. And the reason why we have that computer is because this program is not just a program for you to sit and watch. This is actually a program for you to interact with. What I would love for you to do is send us any observations, comments, and even your questions. All you need to do is text us. The number is right down there below, 562-286-1838. So we do encourage you to, uh, to text us any of those sorts of things. Just remember that text rates may apply, so make sure you get permission if you do need permission. But today we are going to be exploring the inside of a fish. So not just the outside of the fish, because we've been doing that quite a lot actually. And that's an easy thing for us to observe even if we were watching a video or looking at a picture. We can see the outside of fish and learn so much about them. We're gonna do a little bit of that and then we're gonna go into the fish and see what's going on on their insides. How does all of that work? Now, we're going to do this by looking at a mackerel. Now, a mackerel is a kind of fish that you actually would find in the ocean pretty close to us here in Long Beach. And it is also a kind of fish that we feed the animals here at our aquarium. So we said, pardon me, excuse us, we need to borrow some of your food. And that's what we're gonna be dissecting today. Now, this here is our exhibit called Blue Cavern. Blue Cavern is an example of what a kelp forest ecosystem looks like. And a kelp forest could be a place that you would find a mackerel. So shall we look at the real deal? Sure, why not, right? Okay, so I have this special camera called a document camera. And basically it lets us see things a little bit closer. So we're gonna go here to my document camera to take a look at a mackerel. Alrighty, here we go. This, my friends, is a mackerel. Now we're gonna adjust the lighting in here just a little bit and that'll allow us to kind of see it a little bit better. So give me a moment to, uh, to get this going here. Now it is a little bit interesting because if you notice the colors of the, this fish actually kind of present a challenge in lighting. What do you notice about the colors of this fish? So yes, this fish is not alive. It was frozen actually and then we thawed it out. And this is food fish, remember. <laughs> All right, so what I've noticed here is that this fish is quite dark on the top and actually much lighter on the bottom. And that's, that's true of a lot of different fish actually. So that coloration is actually a really important part of, uh, of how they survive. Because if you were to be a predator swimming above this fish in the ocean and you're looking down hunting, that dark top of that fish actually blends in with the ocean floor below that is also quite dark. If you're a predator below the fish swimming around looking up looking for some food, that very light colored belly there is, um, is going to blend in with the lighter surface of the ocean. And the, the surface of the ocean is lighter because of the sunlight or the moonlight that's coming from above. So this is actually a type of camouflage. The camouflage is called countershading. All right, and you're gonna notice this in a lot of animals. In fact, think about some different ocean animals that you know that might have a darker top and a lighter belly when it's swimming in the ocean. One that comes to mind for me is a penguin. That's a really great example, or an orca. So there are so many animals, not just fish, but even birds and mammals that also have this coloration in the ocean. It's great for blending in. So the other thing I noticed about the colors is not just dark at the top here. Take a look at those really interesting patterns on the body. So that pattern right there, that wavy pattern, actually even helps it blend in even more because of the, um, the different shadows that you're gonna be seeing on the ocean floor and the way that those shadows might move even on the ocean floor too. So that pattern on the back is even better camouflage than just being dark on the top, light on the bottom. Interesting. Now, what else can we discover about this fish by looking at the exterior uh, of the fish here? So we looked at the coloration, right? What else can we notice? Did you notice the, the fins? So yes, they have 
quite a few fins here, and each of these fins is used for different things. Which fin do you think this fish might use to swim or to push itself through the water? I guess all of the fins are used for swimming in some way, but for like the pushing itself through the water part of it. If you're saying the tail, absolutely. So this tail here is a great, um, a great thing to have for it to uh, move side to side like this. And that side to side motion is going to push it through um, through the water. And if you notice here, even the shape of the tail is a really uh, important shape for this fish because the shape of the tail here, this kind of deep V cut is actually going to allow this fish to be a little bit on the faster side. So we can get nice big spurts of speed because it is, as you notice here, this fish is not the most enormous fish ever. It's a pretty big mackerel, but, um, it needs to have speed to get away from predators. So this deep cut makes it a little bit easier for it to paddle through the water, to push it side to side, um, so that way it can go at faster speeds. There are lots of fish out there too with a different shaped tail. Now let's go back to Blue Cavern um, because we have a fish in there that is much larger in size. In fact, it's bigger than I am. Um, it's probably about the same length as I am tall. You don't know how tall I am, but you know, pretty big uh, or pretty small for a human. So here, this fish right here is called a giant sea bass. It's a very big fish, but take a look at its tail shape. Do you see the difference between the mackerel and this fish here? So having this big kind of paddle shape, it means it's gonna get a lot of force when it, when it paddles through the water, but it's not going to be able to get the kind of speed because it takes a lot more effort for them to move through the water because the, the water is gonna have a lot of resistance as it moves. You can actually try this, um, if maybe get a, a bucket or a pool or something outside when you do this. But um, if you have a, a hand like this and you try to push through the water, it's a lot tougher to do than if you spread your fingers out and you do that through the water. It's a little easier, okay? So, um, so that's kind of how fish tails work too. So let's take a look again at our mackerel. We saw this tail here, but we said that it has other fins, right, to help it out. Well, if it's gonna go fast, and it's the shape that it's in, which is kind of football shaped here, um, then it's going to move like a football. Now, if you've ever seen a football fly through the air, especially like in a football game or something, you may notice that that football spirals. That means it moves and it kind of turns like this as it's moving, right? Well, the fish would do the same thing if it didn't have fins to help it. So these fins here can be extended. So there's this fin here. Let me pull the lighting down a little to hopefully see better. There we go. So that fin right there is called the dorsal fin. It's on the top of the body of the fish or the dorsal side of the fish. And that right there, if it extends it up, it actually gives it some stability so it doesn't spiral through the water. Now it doesn't just have this one dorsal fin, it has another one right here, okay? And then, so that dorsal fin right there is also good. A lot of fish actually have two. In fact, even sharks have two dorsal fins, just like you see here. But besides those two dorsal fins, if we look really, really carefully toward the back end of this fish here, I'm gonna zoom it in. Hopefully that will help us to see. Do you see those little bumps right there? Those little bumps are also fin-like things, and they actually have them on the bottom here too. These are called finlets because they're not quite as fin-like, right? They're, they're fin-ish. <laughs> so these finlets also give this fish stability. So that's really great, right? Tons and tons of fins for stability. Now, it does have a few other fins that we're gonna take a quick look at. It needs to be able to steer, right? Otherwise it will crash into things. Nobody wants that. So it does need to steer and it does have these fins here on the side that it will use for steering. If I move the fish here, you can see that a little bit better. So it has one here on this side. It has another one here on this side. These ones here are called their pectoral fins. Great for steering. It will help them maneuver quite well. And then it even has a few little fins here on the bottom. And these fins can be used for stability. It has a fin kind of close by um, where it goes to the bathroom to kind of help make that go away. So all of these fins have a really important function for our fish friend here. Now remember, if you do have any questions, comments, uh, anything like that, 
I do encourage you to send us that text. Our number just came up right there, 562-286-1838. All right, shall we continue looking at our fish? All right. So now that we've seen a lot of the body, let's look here at the fish's face because who doesn't love a fish face? All right, whoa, we really zoomed in there. Okay, so I'm gonna brighten this up a little bit. There we go. And you'll notice here that this fish is, uh, has a very easy to see face, right? You can see the eye right here and the eye is used for seeing things, which is important. And then it has its little mouth. Now the mouth here seems like it's a pretty good size, right? That mouth is great for being able to eat things. And it's going to eat anything that really fits in its mouth. But here's the thing, that's not the size that it is. Check this out. That mouth can actually extend. So it can extend much larger. And that means anything that fits in that mouth is what it's going to eat. Now wait, does a fish have a tongue? What do you think? Do fish have tongues? Do they need tongues? What are tongues even used for? Well. Let's take a look inside. Uh, aha! Do you see that little tongue right there? So they do have tongues. It's not very big. It's actually quite small, but it does have a tongue inside its mouth. Okay, so very interesting that we've seen so far on this fish. Now, another part of the face that I do want us to kind of focus on a little bit is actually the gill of the fish. Do you know why fish have gills? If you're thinking for breathing, absolutely. So they do need to breathe oxygen, but the oxygen that they're getting is from the water. And I know this sounds kind of crazy, but a fish can drown. If you have water that has no oxygen in it, the fish can't breathe because it needs oxygen. So there are actually dissolved like tiny bubbles of oxygen in ocean water. And that's what the fish needs to get through and past its gills. So just like we have to breathe air and we get that oxygen in our lungs, they have to get it past their gills. Now let's see, we have Aldo asking, oh, what do mackerels eat? That's a great question. Um, so it depends on how big their mouth is, right? When it's a baby mackerel, it's gonna have to eat things that are smaller. In fact, when they first hatch, they're gonna be eating tiny plankton. So you wouldn't even really be able to see it. But as they grow bigger and bigger and bigger, they're going to be able to eat bigger things. Now this mackerel, we saw its mouth, right? Its mouth can get quite large. This is gonna be eating some, some smaller fish, maybe fish that are about that big, maybe fish that are even a little bit bigger if they're really skinny. So um, they really just swallow it whole. Did you, did you notice any teeth in its mouth? Shall we look again? Maybe let's go look again and see if there's any teeth in there because that's going to help us see um, a little bit more about what they eat there. So do you notice any teeth? Yeah, not really, right? So if, um, if you were able to touch this, you might notice it's a little bit bumpy. There's tiny, tiny bumps, and those would basically be their teeth. And I wonder if other fish have teeth. Can you think of any fish that might have teeth? What about a shark? Yeah, so sharks are fish, they have teeth. There are also other kinds of fish, similar to our mackerel friend here that does have teeth too. And their teeth will tell you a lot about what they eat. So now we notice here, this fish doesn't have big teeth. So whatever it's eating, it has to swallow whole because it can't chew. So that's really interesting. Okay, uh, let's see. We also have a question here. Do fish have taste buds? Ah, I love that question. Yes, they do. They actually have taste buds on their tongue, sometimes on their lips. There's some fish that actually have these little like extra things that come from their chin. So like it'd be hanging off right here called a barbel. That's kind of a way to, to taste things and smell things. Um, and even some have uh, sensors on the outside of their body that kind of helps with that as well. So, so yes, fish can actually taste things. In fact, we have some fish here that if you feed them food and they take it in their mouth, they may not actually want that squid because they'd rather have a fish or something. And so they'll actually spit it out. So yes, they even have preferences of food as well. Pretty interesting. Okay, so let's go back to those gills. I think we have some more questions coming in, but I wanna make sure that we have enough time to kind of look at everything here. So in order to see the gills, we actually have to move this flap here. This flap is a really important part of the fish because it is protecting those gills. 
so nothing can run into the gills and damage them. It's kind of like how we have skin and ribs that are protecting our lungs, okay? So when a fish breathes, the water actually goes in here through their mouth, and then it goes out past the gill flap here, and that's how it gets to the gills that are right there inside. So I'm going to remove the gill flap here so we can actually see those gills a little bit easier, okay? All right, so now that that gill flap is gone, we can actually see the gills, and I'm gonna brighten this up a little bit so maybe we can see it a little bit better. There we go. So you can see that it's actually quite pink because it needs to have some blood as part of the gills because the, the oxygen that it's taking in is going into the blood to get to the rest of the body. So it's just like our lungs are quite pink as well. Now I'm gonna actually cut um, a couple of these gills out so we can see them a little bit better. So just got to do a quick little trim here for us to see the gills and I'll zoom out a touch. Okay, so now we have the gill. So this is how it is inside their body and the water's going to come past right here. Now this fluffy part right here is actually where it's going to um, do the oxygen exchange. So that's where they get the oxygen from the water. Now here's an interesting thing though. If I stretch this out, do you notice those spikes? Take a look at those spikes. It's pretty crazy. Now they're not really hard, but they are a little bit stiff. These spikes are an important part of the gill because those spikes can actually rake out any chunks that come with the water. So it might be food. It might be um, other things that they really don't want to go past this part of their gills. Because remember, this is the part that they need to breathe. And so they want to protect that part. It's actually quite soft. So this part here is going to take chunks out of the water. They're called gill rakers because they rake out the chunks. And, um, and then it protects these gills here. Now, whatever gets caught in the gill rakers, they actually will swallow. So if it is food, that's great news, right? But what if it's small things of plastic? Maybe not so great. So it's good that the plastic is not going to harm the gills, but they do have to swallow it which eh, we don't really love too much. So maybe that's one of the reasons why plastics are not great for our ocean here. Now, uh, we have a few more questions. I'm gonna take a pause on the gill here so that way we can answer some of your questions. Zulma is asking, do all fish have scales? Great question. The answer is no, not all fish have scales. There's actually quite a number of fish like our beautiful moray eel here that doesn't have scales at all. And that's okay. They have other adaptations that are going to be helping them out in the ways that scales can help out fish, uh, uh, fish that have scales. Um, so there are also other kinds of fish like sturgeons. Um, there's this really cool fish called a hagfish that looks a lot like an eel, but it uh, actually has a very slimy uh, personality that um, that helps it survive. Um, so there are actually quite a number of fish out there that don't have scales. Genesis is asking, how, uh, how does a fish drown? Oh, good question, Genesis. We mentioned that, right? A fish can drown. Well, the reason why a fish can drown is because they need oxygen in the water, right? And so if the water has no oxygen, which is a little bit tough to do, but it happens sometimes. But if a water has no oxygen in it, there's nothing for the fish to breathe. So they're not actually breathing the, the water. They're getting the oxygen that's in the water. It's a little bit complicated, but, um, but it's kind of like us too. There's lots of different things that are in the air, right? But the part that we need to survive is the oxygen that's in the air. So if there's no oxygen in the air, then we wouldn't be able to survive either. So it, that's kind of how that works. So good question, Genesis. And then I have Darlene asking, how do we know how old a fish is? Well, Darlene, it depends on the kind of fish. There are um, some fish out there that the way you can tell how old it is is by looking at its ear bone. Now, we won't be able to do that with our mackerel friend here, um, but there are some fish out there that have um, ear bones that have rings, kind of like a tree has rings, and you can count those rings to know the age of the tree. 
And so you can count the rings of the ear bone of a fish in order to know the age of the fish. So that's pretty cool. And then we have Logan asking, how do river fish breathe? Ah, Logan, actually very similar to the way that an ocean fish can breathe. So the water goes in its mouth, and then it comes out of the gills, and that oxygen is going to go where those gills are. And the nice thing about a lot of rivers is that that water is moving a lot, and so it's actually getting a lot of oxygen from the air, kind of getting pushed into it. It's also actually a good reason why we need to have plants and seaweeds inside of the water because that's going to also make oxygen just like plants uh, and trees and bushes and grass make um, oxygen on land all of the seaweed that you see here makes oxygen in the water in fact this seaweed makes so much oxygen in the water that a lot of it will even go up into the air later but that's a whole nother story let's not go there let's get back to our fish instead okay so this is really cool we've seen a lot um, of our outside bits of our fish. We even had a chance to look at its gills. I think we should move to the inside of the fish because we're starting to run out of time. Now, I actually pre-prepared a fish to help us out here because I want us to make sure that we get plenty of time to look in the fish. So here is another mackerel that I prepared already. And I was able to cut the side of the fish out or off. So there we go right there. Now, a fish is a vertebrate. That means it does have bones. And you can see here the bones, the ribs of this fish. So yes, they have bones. If any of you have eaten fish, you may be quite familiar with the bones of a fish. It even has a backbone, and that backbone is right along here in the fish. This one's really hard to tell because it's such a big fish. It's got a lot of muscle to it, so it's kind of tough to see all the bony bits. Um, let's see, Arnoldo is asking, how many fins do a mackerel, or does a mackerel have? Well, we kind of counted that, right? We had, um, let's see, we had the tail, we had the two side fins, so there we go, three. We had two dorsal fins, so that's five. It has a couple, let's see, two, three fins on the bottom, so that's eight. So I would say eight real fins, and then we had all those little finlets, so those tiny bumps. Let's see, I see one, two, three, four, five little finlets there. It probably has five on the bottom too. So then 10 finlets. So there's a lot of fin things happening to this fish. But the inside of the fish, how do you know what's what? That's tough, right? <laughs> well, this fish here has a lot of things that, we, that you might notice. One of the first things I notice is this because it's shiny. What do you think that is? Now, I said that this mackerel eats whole fish. So in some ways you'd think, oh, maybe that's a whole fish. But remember, when you eat, the food goes in your mouth and then it goes down your throat into your stomach, right? So it doesn't just go into your body. It actually goes into your stomach. And that's the same thing for our fish here. The food goes in its mouth into a tube. It's esophagus is what it's called. And that's like it's going in its throat. And then it goes into a stomach. And that's not the stomach, and that's not a fish. We'll get back to that in a minute. Let's go look for the stomach instead. Now, in order to see the stomach, we actually have to get through all of these other organs. This, my friends, is its stomach right here. So the food would go into its mouth over here, okay? And then after it goes in its mouth, it goes through the tubing into its stomach right here. So that is kind of crazy. Now that bright kind of shiny thing that we're seeing right here, that is actually called an air bladder. So not all fish have this because there's lots of fish that just kind of hang out on the bottom of the ocean. They don't need an air bladder. But if you were to think about an air bladder, what might be inside, it's air. So they can have air in here and they can, um, they can inflate it so it gets a little bit bigger and that makes them more floaty. It's like having a balloon inside their body, right? So if the balloon gets bigger, more air inside, it can float. If there's less air inside, it can sink. So this helps the fish with something called buoyancy. What that means is, is it helps the fish float a little bit higher, a little bit lower, somewhere in the middle, and they can control how much air is in there. They can control their buoyancy, so how much they can float. That is really, really important, especially for a fish that's swimming in the water all the time. And a mackerel is definitely one of those swimming kind of fish. Um, 
Let's see. We have a few more questions here. Sophia's asking, can a fish hear? Oh, and how. Okay, so can a fish hear and how? So yes, fish have ears. Maybe let's go to um, to a fish that's not cut open. So that way we don't have to just stare at the insides of a fish. Um, but yes, a fish can hear. They do have ears, you just can't see them. It's kind of more just on the inside of, um, of their bodies. And they can feel the vibrations um, of, of sound. And that's kind of what we do too, but our, our ears will feel that vibration and then it goes to our brains and tells us that we hear stuff. So yes, fish can hear and they have an inside ear. So that's how they're hearing. Kimberly is asking, is a mackerel a predator or prey? Great question. Okay, so what is a predator? A predator is an animal that hunts for food, right? So that means they're going to be eating other animals. Well, we were saying earlier that it does eat other animals, right? So it is a predator. But wait a minute. Do you think anything's going to eat it? Absolutely. It's not a very big fish. There's lots of things, like even these guys right here, these big giant sea bass, that are absolutely going to eat it. That means it's also prey. So it is both predator and prey. Great question, Kimberly. Maximo is asking, how many bones does a fish have? Well, that depends on the species. There are so many different types of fish out there that I, I would say like thousands of fish out there. And all of those fish have slightly different makeups. So different number of bones, their guts might even look a little bit different. Um, so yeah, it depends on the species. And then uh, Logan is asking, how do invertebrates breathe? So we've heard about the gills of a fish, right? Well, there's lots of different ways that invertebrates breathe too. So some of the invertebrates, like these anemones here, they just kind of suck in the oxygen. So their bodies are just kind of made to suck it in. Same thing with jellies there. But these sea stars, they actually have their feet that help them breathe. So their feet help them uh, get water into their bodies and out of their bodies. And, and that's how they're gonna get water inside their body there. And inside their body, they have um, organs that are gonna help them get oxygen from the water. So it really depends on, um, on the invertebrate. Again, there are thousands of invertebrates. And so each one kind of has their own functions. All right, let's get back to that fish real quick. So um, so again, we have this shiny, shiny air bladder here, and it's something that I can actually pop. It will go away as soon as I cut it. Are you ready? Here we go. If I can, there we go. So it's gone now. Yep. So I popped the air bladder so it's no longer really there. I mean, it's obviously still there, but it's no longer full of air. So it's not going to be a balloon anymore. Now, did you notice this weird stuff right here? To me, it almost looks like a human brain. There's lots of kind of um, bits and pieces, lots of lines and all of that like a human brain. But this is not their brain. Where do you think the brain of the fish is? Up here in its noggin. Yep. So they do have brains. They're not the biggest brains, but they're, they're good enough to help that fish live. This part right here is called a pyloric cica. What that means is actually it's part of their digestion system. So when their um, stomachs kind of start breaking down the food to get the nutrients in the fish that they eat or in the, um, the different animals that they eat, then it's gonna go through the pyloric cica here. And there's so much surface area that means there's lots of lines and, and lots of bits and pieces of this organ, and it's going to be able to suck in all the nutrients for that fish to use. But the last thing that I really want us to explore, because it's really quite interesting, is its heart. We've been looking inside this fish, and we haven't really seen much of a heart, right? We've seen something that's very similar to intestines, the pyloric cica, we've seen the stomach, we've seen this big guy right here, this is the liver. It actually has a liver on the other side as well. Well, what about the heart? Well, the heart is actually way up here. The heart is close to the gills. And it's a really tough thing for us to see because it's very, very dark. And it has to be dark because that's where the blood is. So we can look here at the gills of the fish, right? You can kind of see the gills right here. Well, the heart is very nearby. This is the heart right there. Do you see that like dark thing right there? That's the heart of the fish. 
So when the oxygen is brought into the body from the gills and, and the blood gets all that oxygen, it's going to go to the heart. And then this heart then pumps it to the rest of the body. So it's a really, this, this fish is a very interesting animal. There's a lot going on on its insides that are going to help it to survive. It actually has, in a lot of ways, similar parts inside their body as we have inside ours. It's just maybe looks a little bit different and maybe the size is a little bit different. And of course, there are a few things that are different, like they have gills where we have lungs and they have an air bladder. We don't have that. We don't need that because we live here on land. But that's some of the really cool stuff that makes a fish so amazing. So thank you all so much for joining us here for our Aquarium Online Academy. If you're watching this at another time and you have more questions, we do encourage you to email them to us. That email address is right here down below, live at lbaop.org. Now for um, our teachers here who were able to bring your class, thank you so much for all of that. If you can send us the number of students that, um, that were attending this session, we would love that because it helps us to kind of keep track of how many students are watching, which helps us make sure that we can continue to help out our, our school community. Thanks again, and hope you have a great day and a great weekend. Bye, everybody.